Join me while I detail another spine-chilling movie plot, and watch out for spoilers. In the year 2176, humans have terraformed 80% of Mars and have established colonies on its surface. Something buried for centuries has just been uncovered and moves silently across the valley leaving only death in its way. A ghost train pulls into the planet's capital containing just a single unconscious passenger, Lt. Melanie Ballard. With nerves running high she is put under inquisition by the planet's council to explain her story, and we flash back to see what happened to the rest of her crew. Melanie is part of the Mars police force with a new member in her crew named Sergeant Jericho Butler. Her regular team consists of rookie officers Michael Desconso, Officer Bashir Kincaid, and Commander Helena Braddock. Before reaching their destination Melanie pops a pill and nods off. A little while into their journey and Helena wakes Mel to inform her that they are picking up a prisoner called Desolation Williams, from a mining town called Shining Canyon. Yared and Rodale are on train operations and pull into the mining town station. The main group suit up and hop off at Shining Canyon, finding that it resembles a ghost town but is usually poppin' this time of night. Jericho hits on Melanie but she's not into it, as they search around the town but find that all the buildings are abandoned. They notice one of the buildings is currently having a power surge so they investigate to find blood all over the walls. The room is filled with torture equipment and the two discover a resident's severed arm. Kincaid Michael and Helena went to the tavern to look around and found all the patrons dead and hanging from the ceiling. The crew all comes together and has difficulty getting hold of the train on the radio. Jericho struggles but eventually hacks into the jail's lock and gains access to the cells. Before they get to the main man the team meets some more prisoners named Akroche, Zimmerman, Benchley, and a scientist named Dr. Arlene Whitlock. Whitlock claims to have run away from the mining station she was working at after all the miners rioted, using a hot air balloon she drifted for several days until finally running out of food and crashing at Shining Canyon. They go find Williams who is still locked up so he couldn't have killed the people in the bar, but he also has no clue what is going on. Desolation Williams is being held under suspicion of murder, a group of rail workers were killed and hung from the ceiling just like here, with Williams being the prime suspect. The team hear a banging on the door and begin to find survivors, starting with a woman who is hallucinating and ignoring the police. Out back of the precinct Melanie and Helena find a rover with a man inside going nuts. They attempt to get inside but it's sealed tight and the man kills himself. Mel noticed that the man was warning her to stay away so Jericho thinks that maybe he was contagious, while something invisible is shown watching the two from inside the rover. Mel goes back to the jail and finds that Jericho has gotten free from his cell. She trades herself as a hostage for Kincaid and tries to subdue Williams, but is knocked out for her troubles. A few moments later she wakes to find that Williams escaped with Michael's shotgun, so the team split up to search for him. Melanie finds a building containing more torture devices and more crazy people using the contraptions on their faces. One of them tries to jump Melanie but Williams shows up and kills it, then takes Mel hostage. Suddenly another jumps Williams and he drops the gun, so Mel takes it and saves him back but also re-arrests him. An entity is shown leaving one of the corpses and almost catches the two as they just leave the room in time. Williams is put back in handcuffs and we hear his side of the story of what happened when he was initially arrested. Williams went into the place to rob it but everyone was already dead and strung up from the ceiling, so he took the money that was left and ran. Desolation points out that the two of them aren't so different as Mel has an illegal habit of popping pills. When Jericho left Melanie earlier he found one of the crazy people running up a hill outside the town. It combined a head with a collection of top spikes and Jericho sees that it belongs to Helena, having already been killed off screen. He follows the killer over the hill to discover where the remaining townsfolk have gone. The miners and all of the townspeople have gone mad and started killing each other and mutilating themselves, while being led by Big Daddy Mars. Jericho radios the news of Helena's death to Melanie, getting her angry and demanding Whitlock explain what she fled from. Whitlock tells them that the miners found something dormant underground that woke up, it began to possess people like ghosts and make them go crazy. All of a sudden the possessed girl from earlier jumps out and attacks them, so Melanie puts her down with a few rounds. The ghost exits her body and looks around at its selection before choosing to go into Benchley. While returning from the mine, Jericho comes across three new unpossessed people who are hiding in a work shed. Uno, Das, and Trace. They claim to have no guns but are in town because they were planning on robbing the miners the night before. While waiting on the ridge they saw an ominous cloud of smoke envelop the mine so they hid in the shed. When the storm went away they returned to see the people wake back up and begin to mutilate themselves, and kill anyone who hadn't changed like them. Jericho brings the trio back to the jailhouse but they suddenly produce weapons and take the crew at gunpoint. Uno is William's blood brother and has the officers lead him to his family, but the moronic crew get a bit overzealous at the sight of their accomplice and Melanie locks them all up together. She decides to make a deal with them to work together and all get out of this alive, to 
To which Williams agrees and has his boys do the same. When Uno tries get fresh with Mel she makes sure he understands who's in charge. Melanie deputizes the rest of the prisoners but sees that Benchley has begun turning, so they leave him in the cell. With Eleven strong they come up with the plan to fight their way to the train station and catch the next train out of town. They load up on weapons and explosives preparing to lose a few on the way, while Doss preemptively injures himself when he machetes off a thumb trying to get into a can of food. The group exit the jailhouse as the town begins to blow up around them. Slowly the possessed townspeople surround them on rooftops and kill Zimmerman with a saw blade to the head. Making it to the station, they realize they have too long of a wait so Williams leads a charge back to the jailhouse. They get surrounded and a massive fight ensues where Doss drops a grenade and blows up trying to retrieve it. As the bodies begin to pile up, the ghostly parasites begin leaving the host bodies and possess Uno. Big Daddy Mars and his arriving flock distract Trace, getting him gutted with a spear, while Michael loses an arm trying to save him, then eventually his head. The last of William's crew dies in his arms as the ghost army pours into the streets of Shining Canyon. Whitlock tells the rest of her story and the origins of the ghosts. While mining they found an alien structure built underground. When she touched the lock it dissolved and released the entities on the planet. The team all stand around trying to come up with plans while waiting for the train to arrive, as the possessed townspeople continue destroying the town one building at a time. Just as Jericho finally withers Mel down enough to hook up with him they are interrupted by gunfire. Kincaid has killed Benchley letting the ghost out of him and it goes straight into Melanie. Jericho and Williams decide to dump her out back and give her one of her pills before running back inside. Melanie begins tripping balls and it disturbs the ghost enough to vomit itself out of her. Left alone and unarmed outside, she gets attacked by a possessed miner but manages to kill him. She uses his weapon as a grappling hook and sneaks back into the jail, where she convinces Jericho and Williams that she is human since she can speak English. Melanie now knows what the Martians' ghosts' motives are, they see humans as the invading species of their planet and won't stop till they are all gone. The ghosts begin their full-blown siege on the building with a battering ram and grappling hooks, straight away breaking their way inside while Mel and Williams hold them off as the first line of defense, rotating with Jericho and Kincaid as they reload. The four keep walking backwards to avoid the ghosts then seal the door at the end of the hall. Out of nowhere Big Daddy Mars drops through the ceiling onto them so Mel shoots a barrel setting him on fire. Akushe is stabbed and killed during the struggle to escape the building and the rest of the survivors all pile into a rover. They drive to the train station being chased through the center of town from all directions. The train has arrived and they all make it on board and escape just in the nick of time. Figuring this may be their only chance to kill them all at once, Melanie convinces them to go back as the dominion of the planet is at stake. She comes up with a plan to blow up the power plant and hopes that it will kill the ghosts and not just the host bodies. When they get back Melanie Jericho and Whitlock head to the plant while the rest of the crew stay on board the train to distract the townspeople. Only a few minutes in and the crispy fried Martian spots them and ruins their plan. They get the place rigged to blow but while the three try to get to the train Whitlock is possessed and left behind, while Yaret is killed by saw blades and Mel is wounded by Big Daddy from range. Just before they get onto the train Jericho is swarmed by a mob and hacked to death, as Kincaid is beheaded and Rodale brought down as well. Melanie and Williams are the only ones left alive but some of the Martians made it onto the rear of the train. Williams goes to deal with it and sets the rear carriage to blow when he is suddenly attacked by Big Daddy Mars. Melanie is attacked by a hitchhiker herself but manages to defeat him and kick him off the train. While Williams gets the better of Crispy and detaches the final carriage with him on board, blowing Big Daddy Mars sky high. The power plant explodes causing a small nuclear explosion. A little while later Williams patches Melanie up while she promises to tell her superiors that he's innocent. Knowing they will need someone to pin it on, he handcuffs Melanie to the bed so as to not be there when the train pulls into the station. She tries to pull her gun on him but the two laugh it off and he leaves. Melanie finishes telling her story to the council and they let her go to recover with some sleep. Sometime later and we see a red mist roll into town, and Melanie wakes to an alarm informing all officers to report to the armory. The ghosts are now spreading through the city and William shows up with some weapons for a final team-up. And the movie ends. So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks.